So if you're just tuning in, it's our ladies' night out, and today we are focusing on clerics, government officials, and the culture of impunity. Now on the line, the phone line will be open shortly. We hear that they're already calling. It's 0906005719. That's the number to call. Um, so we also have um, um, your messages on WhatsApp, and if you want to join, please let us hear what you have to say. You can join the conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow, or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-8038-4663. All right, so that's, um, that's the, um, the, because we hear people are calling. Just give us a minute, because I want us to be able to lay out all the facts. Mm -hmm. Now, we have a tweet from um, the RCCG Geo, that's um, Adeboye. Mm -hmm. uh, if they can pull out that tweet for me. Um, the tweet was, uh, was it just said, uh, stay safe, wear a mask, right? And someone now re responded to that tweet. Very funny response. And the person was saying something around, you know, you are, you are the one preaching faith, right? Where is your faith? Um, and uh, healing or something. Let me, let me pull out that. Um, yeah. So with all due respect, sir, where is the faith, miracle, and healing you preach? Where is um, Psalm 91 in all of this? I mean, they are, if you go on that um, Twitter thread, it is a lot of conversation back and forth. Exactly. Right? I don't want to go too much deep into that. But I'm just trying to tell you the mind of different people, the minds of Nigerians. Mm -hmm. Right? So a lot of people are divided on this conversation because people don't understand. If you understand and if our men of God are responsible enough to tell the people that in a, in a land where you are, the law is first. The law comes first. You must first of all obey the laws of the land because it is God himself that appoint leaders. But right? if you take it the other way, you will still find out that the leaders are not obeying no, that law. Hold on. Let us, we have, already, we have already put the we have leader already, yes. where they are. And that that's they are the reason false. why we are getting such a reaction, reaction. from them. So hold on. Then Adifarasi, Paul Adifarasi also um, sent a tweet because they lost a dear pastor of his. Right? He lost the pastor. And I'll read that tweet. He said, it is important to remind the community about the deadly nature of COVID-19. It's mutant virus strain. Please do your part by following all the recommended precautions. That way you are able to protect yourself and others who become proximal to you. God bless and keep us all. Now, these are mm. divers. I mean, my pastor has come out several times to say, in my church, for instance, mm. you must actually register online to say you're coming to church. Mm. You know, and you must watch, you must watch their booth, sanitizing booth Absolutely. in the church. Then when you are in church, you're not allowed to bring down your nose mask until mm. after the service you leave. Right. So I'm saying that people to, to even attend church in Daystar right now, you must go online, register that you are coming. They need to prepare for you that you're coming. Exactly. We have totally, totally Putting things in put everything in place. Yes. So what, why do we have this division? In the Christendom, that's the question. Mori and um, EC, maybe you want to come in first before I bring in Mori. For me, why we have the division in Christendom is because we don't speak in one voice. And another thing is this: take the I. I would look at it from um, two dimensions. I would always look at your level of education and how enlightened you are as a pastor. As a pastor, I don't think the um, pastor that spoke earlier is as enlightened and as educated as Adeboye, Jill, and uh, Adifarasi, even as the stars, pastors, doc, my precious Dr. Sam. <laughs> so it is important for us to put this into perspective when we are talking about- Do you think the, it's just about enlightenment? I think it's so about enlightenment, why, exposure, listen. and how well, how it is, ignorance has a huge role to play here. You have your faith, no, I no. agree. I agree you have faith in God, but I also, I also believe that you should look at your facts and your figures. What are the facts? People are dropping like flies because of COVID-19. So now, let me explain something to you. And that's why okay. when I started the conversation today, mm -hmm. I was saying something about faith, right? Mm -hmm. We believe that we can be healed. Absolutely. So maybe that is where the conflict is coming from. And I, I honestly want somebody to be able to call and explain this to me. There because is. there is a part of faith and it's also a part of responsibility because even faith without work the bible says is dead right so maury let me the, come to you sorry i'll okay. come to you again you see let oh. me come to maury so i'm going to be coming from a neutral point in all of this right please do um and i'm going to use this example because we've experienced hatred we know that there's something called love because we've experienced people like the clergyman we know that 
Pastor um, Sam is actually one of the wise and good ones. Mm -hmm. So I think that's just how it is with life. But it is you as an individual, it is left to you to decide not to listen you know, to a person who's not making sense. The clergyman is, um, is responsible for his own life. You know, whatever he chooses to do with, if he likes to him walk naked the whole of Lagos, that's actually his business. But you as a believer, as a follower, should be able to know when somebody is going off the radar. And that's, that's my stance in all of this. It's just like having a fake man of God and you have a real man of God. You will, there is something that is written in the Bible that says, by their fruits, you shall know them. The fact that the pastor said, okay, um, how do I put this one without ruffling feathers? <laughs> but let me, let me digress a bit, okay? I don't want to say this. But the key thing is this, that we should take this into cognizance that we have the right to choose what we listen to and what we take in. Okay, so you see, the question is, have we been empowered to be able to think for ourselves is to differentiate between right or wrong that is why I let me tell ignorance. you something the role of a pastor right mm -hmm. now in nigeria is quite huge exactly they influence the thoughts they influence everything that people i mean huge numbers of people listen to these people almost on a daily basis do you basis. know why so hold on let me finish my point mm -hmm. so you are talking from a point of you have been liberated from mm -hmm. your mind. How many people can think for themselves and differentiate between right and wrong? That's the question. Even where the government has failed, where you're supposed to educate the people, you haven't educated the people. Paul, so how can they differentiate between left from right? There's a saying that um, religion is the opium of the masses. We believe that whatever the pastor says is key. It's Lord it's, and it's, Master. It's Lord and Master Let because me, we me. are poor in our heart and we are poor in our thoughts and we are poor in the way we try to, in our environment, how in our, in our infrastructure, everything about us is actually poor. So if you even look at the people that actually listen to people that actually try to lead a mastery, they have a mindset that is so myopic and they okay. just stick to that <laughs> thing. Let me take a the comment pastor says. from Benson. In simple terms, I hear that the calls are coming in. We can take calls now if, if it's open. Okay. In simple terms, right, no one eats with dirty cutlery or unclean hands. Mm -hmm. There are definite consequences. Similarly, wearing the nose mask is also an attempt to keep the infections at bay. Exactly. Do you understand? So if you, if you even follow the rules... When you're supposed to eat, are you not supposed to wash your hands? These things, it's not like it is out of the ordinary. So I don't understand why pastors are kicking. Some pastors, not all, because we cannot generalize. Exactly. Some pastors are kicking against, um, what's it called? The members wearing, wearing of or nose masks taking the or taking the precautionary measures. Because these things are simple hygiene. Mm -hmm. I have not seen anything about COVID that is out of the world. Trust Absolutely. me. I was saying in the makeup room that before... If, if I had the kind of faith I had for my health, my healing, <laughs> if I had for faith money. for money, I'll be a billionaire <laughs> because I don't believe anything can come near me. Exactly. But that does not mean I will be irresponsible totally. and not do my part. Totally. So that's my point that when we are talking to clergymen, we are asking you, we are appealing that the number of people that are, uh, what's it called, are, are, are not thinking straight, that did not have the mind of their own, there are a lot more. So when you are doing that, you might be saying that. It is fine for you to say that. But the people that are listening, they're taking your words hook, line, and sinker. How much faith do they have to be able to stand? It's just like the devil. You say, I want to tempt the devil. Meanwhile, the man of God who is stronger than you, his faith is like a mustard seed. And yours isn't even as small, as small as a mustard seed. And you go and say, I'm going to fight the devil. And the devil just eats you all up. <laughs> all right. So someone is asking me to calm down. I'm too tense. Sorry. It's a, that's why I don't talk about this kind of things. But you guys have to bring religion, my leg out. Well, religion. Well, Mori, you were going to say something about haram. And you, you said you were going yes. to save it for later. What was that about? You know, because yeah, I sort of um, explain the difference between being halal and being haram. It's just um, halal are things that are permissible in Islam, and then haram are things that are not permissible in in Islam. That's just basically the difference. So I was saying that even me, as I am like this, I am not too, haram enough. You know, I am not Muslim enough for some Muslim people. Hmm. So I feel like the the, um, the the separation is not just in. Christianity is in both religions. You have the extremist 
Muslim people who will also say that you should have faith um, and nothing is going to happen to you. I mean, but I don't know, for some reason, it's not rampant. I don't know what miracle is going on somewhere, but we pray the Lord that it's not as much. But I just feel like it's in both religions, to be very honest. There's the extremists and there's people who actually use their brain as God has ordained us to. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, so um, we have some comments. Uh, Maury, you have some. Um, you see, let me see if we can just get in a few comments because I got, when I posted this on social media, I got a lot of backlash. Someone sent me a message that you just want to use the opportunity to, uh, what's it called, to bring down the church. That's why you're bringing this topic. I said, no. It's not, so, and I don't know why it is so difficult for us to have a conversation around religion without everybody fighting. without being yeah. emotional. Without, not even that. You can be emotional, like the way I'm raising my voice. But I'm saying that <laughs> without us having to insult each other and think mm -hmm. that there's an ulterior motive. The reason I'm saying this is because the, the, the large population that do not know better, they are much more than the people that exactly. know. Exactly. Right? Because even the government has failed in terms of education. Mm -hmm. People are not enlightened. People are not properly educated. So they don't know their left from their right. And that's why a government official can bring 2,000 naira and say, sell your votes, and they will sell their votes g gladly. So okay. already, we are already in a situation where it's, is it precarious or what do they call it? It is. You understand? We're already in that situation. So how do we even make it better? I would expect that the responsible thing for men of God that, ha that hold that, that power of influence, to be able to influence the minds of people, would do their part to say, you know what? Yes, we have faith. Yes, we have all of these things. But obey the laws of the land and be responsible. That's all we are asking for. Because if they truly, look at the number of congregants that they have. Oh, yeah. If they truly take on this thing and they start to talk about this every Sunday, I tell you, the numbers will drop faster than when the government talks. Exactly. You know exactly. what, let's take the comments. Okay, my comment is from Angela. And Angela says, we have to understand that clergymen are men of, are men. No, let me take this again. We have to understand that clergymen are men before men of God. With different opinions, you have to understand not everyone can have same views. The world is better because of our diverse views. Okay, and that's so, from Angela. I think she's, she's correct in what she says, but the key thing is for us to understand that they have been called to the pew, so the, the pulpit, sorry. And because they've been called to the pulpit, they should, um, how do I put it now, um, guide their congregants right. That's my point of view. All right. All right, so Mari, let's take your c comment. Okay, so my comment is from Chris, and it says, on the topic of nose masks, government and clergymen are made up of people like you and me. Adhering to COVID-19 precautions is first and foremost a personal responsibility. And I like what he ended it with, and that's what I stated earlier, a personal responsibility. Yes. Your pastor has the right to say whatever he wants to say. He's entitled, that is his business. But it is your own responsibility to be able to decipher, is he saying what is right or is he going astray? Mm -hmm. That's just my own. So thing. that's my point. And I, and Mary, I, you're, and you're still not getting the point I'm trying to put across to EC. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that, you say it is my responsibility for me to decipher what he, whether what he's but saying is right or wrong. But I can't decipher because if, I don't have the um, um, uh, What if I have, no, to I have not been empowered if to be my, able to decipher my, for myself? My, if my imam now comes to say that don't wear your mask, I will not have... I may not step my feet in that mosque ever again because you are, that's, this is, you are, talking, you are capping. Me, I'm sorry, I don't know if that now. word is for TV, but he's <laughs> capping. No, that's what I'm saying to you, Maury, that you are saying this because your mind, right, you are on a different pedestal when it comes to the, the, this people, the class of people that we're talking about. You have a mind of your own, right? The number of people mm -hmm. that do not have a mind of their own, they are much more than us that can think that this is right from wrong, right? That's the point. You know, Somebody sent me something okay. on Twitter because he was saying that um, you're just looking for an avenue to attack. I think this is from Ade Yaba Ezekiel. You're just looking for an avenue to attack and ridicule the church. Um, check how the Asians are treating themselves of COVID-19. But Nigerian government foolishly just w want to believe um, the NWO by claiming it has no cure but vaccine. Hmm. I understand this part. 
Because even I have said it several times on this chair that I believe that whatever it is that is making our numbers not rise or people not drop dead like they predicted must be within Africa. It might be inside our food, it might be inside our herbs, it might be inside whatever it is that we or have the locally. So what and that is what I'm saying that you see, I don't want us to make assumptions. Even with the government, I would have thought that a proactive government would be thinking, you know what? Why let us probe it? Why are we not having these high numbers of COVID-19 cases like we have other parts of the climate? Mm -hmm. Let's not just assume it is our weather. Mm -hmm. Are we doing research? Are we paying people to go and do research? What, what is research making these numbers like low? That's the point. So <laughs> the thing is actually very, very scattered. Oh, the government has failed, right? And if we want to help ourselves, the clergymen, I would think should that, rise should up rise to up location. to the challenge. They I expect them to rise up to the challenge because a lot of us believe our pastors, we go to church, we go to mosque. Absolutely. Right? So what is the responsible thing for you to do as a, as a clergyman? Lead do them the right. right thing and lead right, you know? Capish. So let me take, <laughs> let me take a comment from, um, okay, so Adebayo says, clergy men should help educate people in line with the laws of the land. Thank you so much, Adebayo. Then um, the prolonged impunity has affected the psychology of Nigerians. That's from Benson. As soon as the, a, the Nigeria, a Nigerian have access to power slash authority, mm -hmm. the only action that comes next is to express impunity. Exactly. So this happens at all levels. That's what mm -hmm. um, Benson is saying. And I totally agree with, um, Benson. with Benson that this is what we see. When you get a small opportunity, you take up... Power corrupts. Absolute, absolute power, power corrupts. corrupts absolutely. absolutely. So I was going to say something because I'm currently reading a book on leadership by Dr. Miles Moron. Ooh. And when I saw this, um, this part of the book, I just felt it was very important to... Um, what's it called? To, to bring it up. To bring it up, you know. But I'll let you come in first before I, I bring up that... Uh, let me look for mm. it, you know. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm talking too much. <laughs> no, 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 not at all, not at all, not at all. But one thing I know is this: I, I, there was a, a pastor I actually listened to recently. I can't really remember who he, he is because we have so many pastors, mm. and I took my time to listen to him. And he said something about um, leadership, and what he said was that we have to learn to be diplomatic in the way we do our dealings, and also remember to give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God, what is God's. So in this case, what he said was, no, let me not go into that. But, but the key thing is for us to understand that we need to believe in God. We need to hold on to our Christian or Christian uh, religion or faith when it comes to we go to church, we pray. But in this case, when it comes to COVID, it's scientific. So in terms of it being scientific, we need to look at it from the perspective of this is Caesar's. As this is for Caesar, we should give unto Caesar's. What is Caesar? Wear our nose mask. Do take the precautionary measures and make sure that we are not found wanting. That's my take. Absolutely. Maury. Oh, well, um, you were saying something about how the clergymen should, um, sorry, all the pastors should... Um, what's that word you use? Educate. Face the task or come up, come, come up to standard with it. But this is also the same issue that me and you, like this is us going back and forth because you were saying, I was saying that if my imam should say something about don't use your face mask, I'm not going to go into the mask again. And then you say something about... Okay, so me sorry, Mori. Hold on, Mori, one minute. I hear there's a caller on the line because they've been trying to call. Sorry. And we run out of time. Who, hello. Hello, how are you doing? Thank you for calling. Let's hear what you have to say. Hello, good evening. Good evening. We can hear you. All right. I have been following the conversation word for word, and I want to key in something into it. Sorry, in one when minute. When it comes to the whole church issue, I believe that Christians should be, we should know God for ourselves. We should not be, well, we should not just follow everything our religious leaders tell you. They tell you, okay, this is what you do, this is what you do, but we should balance this thing. The religious leader they come from one angle, you should come from your own angle. You should not just agree with everything our religious leaders tell us. That's why we have issues in, in Africa. Mm. In Nigeria right now, we just say oh, our pastors say our pastors, that is why we are mm -hmm. leading us astray. If we balance these things and okay, listen to what the pastor has to say and judge and we we'll, we'll come to our own conclusion, we don't really need to like take in all the opinions mm. our religious leaders are telling us. That is my own take on it. We should honor God for ourselves. 
and we should have our make our own judgment, not listen to everything the pastor is dashing at us. Just say that, take, take, take. We are not, we are, we are not taking everything. We are taking some, and we really thank you need so to, much, Samuel. You know, balance these things so that we will not go astray. Thank Absolutely. you, Samuel. Thank you so much. So, um, Mori, <laughs> I think that was what Mori was trying to say. Mori, you can go ahead, please. Yeah, uh, that was. I was trying to say that it's the same way that we have people who don't know how to decide the right from the wrong. That's the same way we have men of God, in quote, who don't know how to um, discover what is right from what is wrong. So now the problem is that we need to find a solution. I don't know what the solution is going to be, but yeah, that's the I think the for me the solution will across. be... Do you understand where... Yeah, I, 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 understand, I understand what you're saying. that men of God should take action, should take charge. Yeah. But the same way we have followers who cannot decipher what is right from what is wrong, it's the same way we have men of God. So I think, I think the person with the higher authority should take the responsibility on themselves to do the right thing. If you ask me. But they don't know what the right your is daughter, the listen, Mori, your daughter cannot tell wrong from right. You are the mother, right? You're supposed to, at this point, help guide her. Exactly. Right? Because she doesn't mm -hmm. know anything better. Exactly. But, right? Uwa, but Uwa, imagine now that my mentality is don't wear face masks. Is that not what I'm going to pass on so to So that's why we're saying that you need to change that mindset and do the responsible thing. Right? I but I don't know that it up. Sorry, let me just quit. <laughs> <laughs> I think this conversation, I didn't expect it was going to go, go like this. But I was going to say that the fact that um, he was talking about true leadership, right? He okay. says true leadership is not control or manipulations of others, mm -hmm. but it is other people's willful submission of mm -hmm. their authority to yours, motivated by inspiration. Thank you. Right? So th for me, when, when you call yourself a leader, do you motivate people? Do you inspire people to want to follow you? Are you an inspirational leader or you are this, tell oh, me what to do and I do it, positive, a dictatorship leader? Positive, because right? they all inspire. Yeah, but it's, positive. What, is, is it positive right, or so is it negative? I think, I think um, thank you so much for, we're sorry we couldn't take more than that call, honestly. Um, but we'll try to do this more often <laughs> if we can keep the conversation short. Thank you, Maury. I think this conversation, we might have to do a part two. Absolutely. Because it's not something that we have exhausted, you know. Um, but thank you again, Isi. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Maury. Thank you for having me on the show. Thank you, darling. Thank you. So, um, ways was birthed from the need to impact. And this year, we're starting our CSR focused on curbing unemployment. Now, if you are a company and you have available internship slots for us, please partner with us as we um, bring um, job seekers to you or people that are willing to come in for internship. And if you are looking for a slot for internship, you can also reach us and um, we'll find a way to place you in some of those companies. Now, this will be an all year round engagement. So keep telling your friends, you know, tell other friends, just keep watching ways and follow us on all our social media platforms. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. When a leader encourages the culture of impunity, the society is lost and it makes the work harder for the rest of us. That's from Mule Shoinka. Please, oh, don't make life hard for us. Thank you so much. We'll see you guys tomorrow live as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy.